Got it. All right. I want to record us too. So thank you so much for joining me today, Christine and Kara. It's nice to see the two of you again. We haven't done this in a long time. I feel like it's been months. It has. But... Glad to be back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Glad to see the two of you. And um, so, so uh, two weeks ago on Solid Grounds live stream, we had Jennifer Richmond from the Institute for Liberal Values on, and she was discussing ethnic studies in California and plans to sort of bring out some alternative ways to present ethnic studies because the way it's being done is so concerning. And um, Carib, you were talking about this with Christine and I, and you had some information to share about this. Do you want to go ahead and sort of set this up about what's going on with ethnic studies right now? Sure. I think the first thing we need to do is clarify that ethnic studies is not what we think it is. We're told that ethnic studies should come into our schools because we need to learn about diversity, that we need to be more inclusive of people. And so what we tend to think is that that means we're looking at the cultures around us, um, that we're just learning about people and like maybe their celebrations, maybe their like the things they eat, their, you know, their traditions. Um, what I found in looking at the California model policy, and I think this is really important that people understand, is that it's called the model policy, not just because it's an example of what California can do, but it's a model policy nationally. So ethnic studies is something that um, the people in DC would like to see in every single state. Mm. Um, for my state, which is kind of crazy, um, if people haven't heard me before, I'm in Utah, which is normally the, the quote unquote religious state. Um, ours is mandated to come in for 2024, which is why I'm taking a look at it now. So eth ethnic studies are mandated to be uptaken by Utah schools in 2024? That's correct. Using the California model. Yes. Yeah, the okay. California model. And interestingly enough, the California model is also launching in 2024 as well. So it's going to yes. be launched together. I'm in California for those of you who are watching and don't know. So I follow the California stuff as much as I can. And so what I've been doing is I've opened up uh, the California model policy, which is almost 700 pages. And I'm going through it line by line and finding what I would consider acceptable. I'm doing this over on my channel, which is Be Not Afraid. Um, and I'm going through it line by line with a group of concerned parents, but also people who are informed. So a teacher who actually taught your standard ethnic studies, um, author Ju Julie Bailey, um, and Brooke Stevens, who has biracial children and is very vested, and myself, who has a biracial son. And um, I have no problem with teaching actual and accurate history. Mm -hmm. What we found is that ethnic studies starts off like their their kind of kickoff point is um, the Black Panther movement. So it's Black liberation is what motivated people to start on the train of ethnic studies. And what we found is uh, Christine Sleater, as one example, she's behind ethnic studies. Um, she is a large influence for Robin DiAngelo, um, who wrote the book. What did you, did you write? How White to be Fragility? Your, right Fragility. Yeah. So it's that kind of. Mm. Kind so that's of, the, that's the philosophy from which this is being taught. Yes. And so they say it's a double helix, um, a double helix of centering around the marginalized. Now you have to understand what these words mean to center around some people, and I'm talking children, and I'm talking mm -hmm. K through 12 children, kindergarten through 12th grade, you have to center around the oppressed. But not only center around them, you are supposed to, um, you are supposed to make them aware of the systems that have oppressed them and create a quote unquote revolutionary energy mm -hmm. in children. So you're and taking also, little kids and making them aware of these yeah. kind of issues in this very specific way from the earliest access to these kids. 
Yes. And one of the things that I found, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to add, they're also doing it with the kids who are white. Important to know because the white privilege and yeah. um, listing the ways in which you're privileged has also become, well, no, it's part of the program as well. So we're doing the oppressed and the oppressors and they're, they're divided in a sense into those two groups. Yeah. And, one of the first, oh, sorry, yeah, sorry, Leslie, will you show the picture with the wheel? Yeah, okay. sure. Let me, okay. let me pull it up here. Um, so this is the stuff that we've all been kind of concerned about, but um, now they're making it, they're like, they're institutionalizing it, making mm -hmm. it this. So this is the picture you're talking about. I'm going to go ahead and make it. Yes, big. yes, the wheel is. So what are we looking at right here, Carrie? So this is the privilege wheel. And if you look at it, you'll see intersex, um, or we'll, we'll look at male, cis man, cis woman. Um, I'm going to make this a little bit larger. Yeah. I wonder if I can do that. Um, okay, here, magnifying glass. Sorry, go ahead and, and talk about it. Sure, that's fine. So you're just, you're showing which groups, two children, which groups have the most privilege. Um, and I can assure you that this is in our local, I did pull this off of Canada because I needed to find a wheel that, um, that did not expose certain things, but it's, I, I found the exact wheel that is being used in in our state's curriculum mm. so um and so and it just shows the kids it makes so they're teaching this to kids at at what age this is k-12 k-12 so, okay so this yeah. is just your elementary kids are getting this wheel like yes. officially shown to them in their yes mm -hmm. and this is part of ethnic studies correct mm -hmm. so this intersectionality thing yes Okay. So the intersectionality I, is all of the ways in which they're not just oppressed, but they're marginalized and right. they're right. This so, thing you've so got highlighted. There's here a rank. Too. It's almost a ranking in a sense of, mm -hmm. of the oppressed. And yes. It's, it's who has it worse type of idea. So there's a, they're ranking those levels as, as, as well. With, History, with, social science. Framework. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And then it says, as a field, ethnic studies seeks to empower all students to engage socially and politically and to think critically about the world around them. It is important for ethnic studies courses to document the experiences of people of color. Now, what one of the things that's interesting about this is that, and I'm not sure if it's on this one, but in the pages that we were going through, it says, so if you're a parent looking at it, you'll, you'll go, oh, well, they want a diverse collection of voices within the community, but it actually talks about how, because time is a constraint, they need to make sure that the voices that they're, that they're bringing in are voices that are well-trained in what they want to get out of the program. Now, Christine Sleater openly says that ethnic studies when guided, and this is a quote, ethnic studies when guided by critical race theory mm. is taking things in the right direction. And Otherwise, this is the person who's writing this. Yes. Christine Slater. Okay. Otherwise, and this is what she says, otherwise you get culture of the month and that is not what they're looking for. Oh, wow. So very clearly they want liberation. Mm -hmm. Culture of the month, meaning we're to this mm -hmm. month we're studying um, Chinese I mean, culture this month exactly. we're studying. Yeah. So exactly. uh, one of the things I noticed here, it says um, in order for students to construct counter narratives, and develop a more complex understanding of the human experience. Well, that would imply that they already have some narrative, but right. you're getting to them before they've developed any narrative. So how could it be a counter narrative? It is in order to have students develop the narrative we want them to develop, which right. might be a counter narrative to what these people think that they're opposing, but it's not a counter narrative for the students in question. For the students in question, it is just the truth. So we're going to give them the truth as we've decided that it is. Yes. Okay. And that truth is all it is. Um, it's Robin DiAngelo. It's Ibram X. Kendi. It's one of the things they've most recently done here in Utah is compare BLM to the South Passage. Um, <laughs> and how, how are they the same? How are they the same event? And that that's already happened without ethnic studies. Mm, okay. So, 
Well, it's a huge, I mean, in California, because of course, California sets the models uh, for a lot of things that end up being adopted by other states throughout the country. So we've already passed a bill here for reparations for black folks. And I don't know how much that's going to be. That's kind of, they've been going back and forth. But the reason that this sort of connects is this may be something that ends up filtering out to the rest of the country. Other states may pick this up and that is something that they will teach also your kids about why they're giving black folks money. Hmm. Well, and here's the thing. It doesn't end with black folks. And I know I'm more passionate than I usually am, but it's because there's so much information and so little time. I, um, it's overwhelming. So, so land acknowledgements. That is land acknowledgements too. So I was at a, a luncheon that had absolutely nothing to do with any of this. It was some, something else. The very first thing that the person said before they started, and this is a medical luncheon. Okay. So this is for people that, you know, were part of a clinical study that I did at UCLA. Fine. Here's a thank you lunch. Here's what we learned. Great. Whatever. Nothing to do with anything other than science. And that's what it was. The very first thing the speaker said, the head of the study, we want to acknowledge that this is sacred space land that we are on right now of indigenous folks. And let's take a moment to pay, you know, to, to, to pay our respects to that. So, so this is happening and that happens in Canada a lot, I understand, but yeah. you're starting to see it now here. Canada and does. It's all, th that's a very religious no, you ceremony. Guys, that's yes. like, that's like, okay, we have to say a prayer before we start. That's very religious. That's very religious. It is. And it is in Canada everywhere. I mean, I was just in, I was just in Vancouver and every single tour I was on very first thing that they said was oh my gosh. The sacred land. So, so you're what, right. you, what you're missing though, is that you have to look at Africa to see where land acknowledgements go. In Africa, they had, they started off with land acknowledgements. They started off with this is land that the um, that's been colonized, um, and then it from that it became a we demand our land back, and then it became a get the white farmers off our land, and then it became and I'm not joking it's become a massacre of white farmers. That's where this stuff goes, and that's why it's so urgent. So they're getting killed, understand. basically. These white farmers probably. They're also disrupting the food supply, so that there's less food that's being produced. So they're starving people out on top of it. I well, mean, this that's is the thing: evil. is these people, the people demanded the land. They got the they got rid of the white farmers, whether they fled or whether they were murdered. They got rid of them, and then they they told them, "You can either take money or you can have the farm." So the people who took the farm, they don't know how to farm. Oh, my goodness. So it's so mm -hmm. they are starving. There's a famine. Mm -hmm. And this starts with land acknowledgments. It starts with what we're putting into our schools. It's for excellent our kids. point. It's such an excellent point. To, but thank you, Carrie, for bringing that all together because it all links to what we're talking about today with the schools. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for that. Be beautifully done. Well, that's Real, it's it makes a lot of sense. That's why it's so urgent. That's why it's. Yeah. People cannot consider, cannot continue to put their heads in the sand. Yeah, this is not okay. I mean, this is, you can hear this stuff and you think that, oh, it's just harmless. Yeah. You know, just placate it, just nod and smile, just get through your DEI training. But right. that's, it doesn't lead to good places. This is leading somewhere really dangerous. And when you see this kind of irrational, like reteaching of basic fundamental concepts, like, like the idea that you can't, you can't know something of substance about a person about their character or their experiences by looking at their skin color. Right. We, that Don't reteach that. Right. That, that's, that doesn't become false because you say it's false. That's, it's ridiculous. Um, so Carrie, what else did you want to share? You had some more documents. Do you want to pull those up or do you want to talk, preface those a little bit more? Um, let me preface a little bit more. Okay. okay. So let's talk about that. Go back to the land acknowledgements. So we start off with, mm -hmm. African-Americans are super, super excited to be what I would call the flavor of the month right now. Um, mm. I recently, it's interesting because I, because I have been verbal on this. And the thing is, is that I'm, I'm a very small presence, right? So, um, but I've had two reporters now say, like, openly call me out and say that what I'm doing is irresponsible. The reason that they're doing that 
is because they've bought into the narrative that Black people only have one way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And it's extremely bigoted. But these are the people who believe that this stuff should be in our schools. So the bigots are the people who are trying to teach our kids to be like them. But you have to take that African-American flavor of the month thing and realize that in Utah, that that clock is going to be out really quickly because they're not the official first people to be on Utah soil, right? So mm -hmm. all of these groups are going to divide each other. We're going to have African-Americans who feel like they're the flavor of the month, but then mm -hmm. who really is, is the Native Americans. So this does not end for anyone. It doesn't end well for anyone because it's a constant wiping out of the next group. Right. It'll be, so, it'll be further and further division. You, yes. You get rid of this enemy and then you split into the next level. There's of all, enemy. That's the problem with all of this is that mm -hmm. it's never winnable. At the end of the day, the battle is, is a, a constant and that will continue for generation after generation. There is no end. That's another, I mean, another problem here is that uh, it goes on. And, and, and in those books that you mentioned, White Fragility, and maybe Ibram Kennedy was, I think, saying this, um, that you know we will never eradicate it in our lifetimes as human beings ever. It, it will never. So what, you know, whether it's land, whether it's whatever it is, it will never end. So mm -hmm. it, it, that's the, the double whammy here is that we're supposed to be in a constant cycle. That's right. Because it's right. a process. It's a process that's being taught. And it's not about the content. It's not about the issue. It's about a way of thinking and a way of dissecting humanity. Right. Correct. And they don't want to eradicate it. I just found out that a, a teacher of this nonsense went from making 38000 a year to 142000 in hmm. one year. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> because they started teaching DEI or what? Yeah. So wow. it, there's no reason to eradicate it when you're, you know, when it's, when it's, that's grip. what makes it enticing. I mean, all of this is connects together. They're going to do that. It's, it, it makes it right. enticing. And you're some, you know, let's just say you're the kind of the average person and you're maybe a little bit um, asleep at the wheel here with what's going on in our world. And you end up see, coming across an opportunity like that. And it looks great. Well, might as well take it. I'm going to do better for my family. I'll do better for me. This is going to be great. The manipulation of it, okay, is so sickening. And that's what it is. The manipulation. Yeah. She's being manipulated by the by this whole agenda and manipulated by by being given what five times her salary, her previous salary, five times or so, yeah. whatever, four times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is so well, it's the same with you, Christine. You could still be teaching, you could still be a professor. Would yes. have just gone along with this. You, Correct. The the, the cost is huge yes. to step away from it, but the cost is huger if you stay with. It. I mean, huger is that a word? But the cost larger. is larger if you larger, stay with it. Larger, because yeah. what we're doing, you if if you think that this is just going to go away, like because this was never this way in our lifetime. Going back to that, just that basic principle of you can't know something of substance about a person by looking at their immutable characteristics. We we recognize the basic humanity in each other and that that there's a mystery in each person that they have to unfold themselves for you. You can't prejudge them. That was the basis of my education when I was a kid. And so if you grew up with this and now you're being told this, it looks so bizarre and it looks so alien and you think, well, surely they're going to course correct. That's going to go away. This is, this is a little nutso thing that's being done right now. It's a trend it's going to disappear. Well, it's not going to disappear because this, this is what they're teaching to the youngest people. This is what they're educating the youth with. And so this is going to be a massive problem for a really long time. It's not going away on its own. It's We have to say no. We have to say this is not okay. And I'm going to add the mental health component here as a therapist, because the rates of anxiety and depression and suicide are going to skyrocket Yes, because of the shame and because of all of this internalized, you know, uh, I'm, I must be a bad person and, and, you know, I, it, it'll never end and, and whatever well, and that's it is, the okay? white side, right. But it's, the other side is everybody's out to get you. Right. Everybody is out to get you. So there's another point there that I'm never going to succeed. Everyone's out to get me no matter what I do. It's systemic. Mm -hmm. So I can't really achieve what I want to achieve. So you've got both sides that are elevated in anxiety and depression 
and, you know, isolation and, or joining violent groups. Okay. Mm -hmm. The extreme is the isolation on one end. Let's talk about the other side, joining these groups to quote unquote, fight back and tear Mm -hmm. down the system, you Mm -hmm. know, root and stem, tear it down. Right. So the implications on the mental health component is going to be significant beyond even with the trans. Okay. We're already seeing the mental health of those kids that is being um, completely destroyed, destroyed. This is also Mm -hmm. going to contribute in a massive way. Mm -hmm. Well, so, so for African-Americans, the um, proficiency rate is 16%. Yep. And what? Reading and math. And this is measured at the high school level? Yes. Mm. Oh, wow. So so 16%. Yet we're graduating kids at 98%. But what you have to understand is under the name of equity, we want to bring other people down to that rather than look at them and say the solution is to figure out what the problem is and lift these kids up. We're making excuses and we're, we're graduating kids at this crazy rate because the only thing that school, the only objective of school is becoming to turn our kids into activists. So, and I know that there And I two- think they, and you know what, and I, um, Carib, I think maybe you'd, you'd be good to do this to just define brief, because people confuse equity and equality a sure. lot, you know? So can, do you mind just, I mean, sure. I can, I can talk about it, but I want you to talk about it from the perspective of, you know, sure. what, so, so equality, equality, um, equality of opportunity Yes. versus equity being equal outcomes for every person. No matter what, not merit-based. No matter what, either, not merit-based at all. And so what that looks like in the classroom is you have a kid who reads well beyond their years and you just make them bored. You just mm-hmm. give them books that are, you know, because you don't want anybody to achieve more because mm-hmm. that looks like favoritism. And it's an elimination of gifted programs and things that would they offer eliminated, enrichment. Yeah, in New York City, they eliminated a, gift, mm-hmm. a gifted program. I think mm-hmm. it was earlier earlier this year. Washington so, State has done the same. Washington State has done the same. Utah has done the same. So I've come up with an idea. Um, Bob Woodson was out here last month and um, I've come up with an idea where I wanted to, or I'm going to, um, do a literacy program and encourage these kids to read books now because they are where they're at. You have to meet them where they're at, right? So I want um, I want to read them a book that has quote unquote representation. But then on top of that, after they've after I've told them their story, um, I do reenact. So after I've told them their story, um, I want them to read another story as their challenge, that is something like, a, say it's oppression and it's high school. So then I would want them to read like Angela's Ashes. So mm-hmm. a story from another culture so that they can start to see that other people can have experiences and can go through things. And this also lifts their literacy rate. Um, mm-hmm. But those kind of things are considered toxic or embraced in whiteness. And that's the concern we can fix ethnic studies. So mm-hmm. I've been torn between, do we need it at all? And should we have it at all? And we're at 16%. And also, is there a way to fix it? Well, sure. Let's bring in the immigrants and let them tell their stories to the kids. Mm-hmm. You know, let them share their culture, but also say why they came to America. Mm-hmm. If we don't want to do that, then we are not providing an ethnic studies course that is helpful we're healthy. We are only creating kids who are broken. You know, I remember when I was in school and this was 20, you know, 30 years ago, how, no longer than that, maybe. And one way that we appreciated cultural, you know, differences is we would have, we would have a day where we would do a potluck and everybody would bring in a food from their culture and, you know, describe, you know, share it. And we would just kind of have this whole day where that's what we did and talked about our cultures and talked about how, you know, the differences and the similarities and, you know, the, the, why we chose the food we chose to bring to the, to the potluck. And that was 
uh, if we're talking about real inclusion, not inclusion and then under this uh, critical social justice umbrella, but actual inclusion, that's a demonstration of that and diversity yeah. and appreciation of diversity. And, that's and now exactly that's not allowed to do. That's, that's not exactly. allowed. Yeah. That's, and that's, that is not allowed. It's yet. like the, uh, it, they're trying horrifying. to create a monoculture in yeah. the, in the name of diversity, creating a monoculture, a monoculture you're not allowed to point out the differences yes, between people. Yes. Well, like when they take, they take what uncle Ben off of the, was it rice? And right. they just replace it with and a Dan, logo. It's not, there's no Aunt person Jemima anymore. With the and, syrup. And, I, it's all yeah. of it. It's all of it. I, yeah. You know, I mean, I think that they're trying, they are, they're trying to sort of modernize, colonize I guess. And colonize. They're, col they're, they're colonizing us. Because they, at the end of saying, the day, yes. Yeah that's how they get control. Okay. That's how they're able to control the masses and you keep them dumb and stupid yes. by, you know, not educating them well and throwing out gifted, you know, programs and doing all this. They mean that they, they, what they're doing is they want to develop a homogenous group, androgynous group of people that, that are basically told what to think and what to do and how to live. And this is the overall goal, which yeah. It, 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 it's a, it's a goal. It's it, it, it that's the outcome mm. that they're searching for. They can't, it can't be anything else, but that, because if you spend two minutes thinking about it, and I think I'm an average intelligence person, I'm not brilliant. I'm not low, low intelligence, but average. If you look and explain just the little bits that you did care, care of today. Okay. Then we can see what the outcome likely, it, it, you know, is what they likely want to ch achieve with the outcome. We need to think about it. And part of the problem is that people aren't thinking critically in the way that critical thinking is supposed to be done. Right. I think it's well, also too heavy. It's yeah. Very, whatever very the heavy ultimate, to... whatever the ultimate reason for all of this is, I think that there's a lot of speculation we could do about that. And there's a lot of really good theories and really good evidence that points in certain directions. But basically it results in division and it results in suspicion and, and hatred of the other. And I think that that's an incredibly dangerous thing to be teaching our kids to do you and know, teaching each other to do. During, yeah. during COVID, there was a, there was a meme that went out and it said, you'll know what side you are on basically of the Nazis, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if we're sending our kids to these schools, when we know what they're going to do, we know what side of history we're on. We're literally sending our kids to be the brown shirts. Mm -hmm. We are literally sending our kids to be, as one person put it, one person said to me, my God, our children are going to load us all up on train cars. That's, that is so that's, chilling. That's yeah, chilling. It's Orwell. It's 1984. It, it absolutely chilling. is. So much of it looks like 1984. Um, Leslie, would you open up more of the pages? Yeah. Which okay. one do you want to pull up here? No, no. All right. Just let's see. We'll just... I, yeah. That's, and that's why I say that because, you know, I, there's the division and then there's the taking and anything that makes us different off the table and homogenizing us in some way it, it, it's both i think so uh carob this was the first one you sent me is this okay. the one you want to start with i, th I, I can think make this one larger if you want okay yeah. all right let's see um go ahead Let me and enlarge going it down i just want to okay okay tell me when okay let's yeah let's, let's, um how this do you one? teach yeah how do you teach ethnic studies in a k-12 environment so we say that we want them to think critically and form their own opinions. Ethnic studies highlight the importance of untold stories. But when you go and look at these, like the danger of a single story, it's not different. Like the person might, might look different. They might be from a different thing, but they have the same ideology. If they don't have the same ideology, then those stories can't be told. And that, like I said, there is a point where they say, we want to hear from all these different voices, but because of time constraints, make sure they hit our goals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just go, oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, um, this I is one of those internal contradictions in in yeah. their teaching. It's like you can't just take one person as an example because you don't want to stereotype other people based off of this one person. So don't stereotype people, but we're going to tell you how Black people form their identity. 
Yeah, and we're going to tell you how the, white yeah. people form an identity. That's right, because if you just look a little bit further past what you highlighted, it's right there. And to be taught, uh, what is it? Uh, ethnic studies focuses on U.S. culture and history from the perspective of marginalized groups. It's right there. Yes, All but the it's from stuff, the group's perspective. That's important, yes, not the exactly. individual's perspective. It's, it's group, from a group perspective. The group's perspe so all of this up here looks nice and dandy, and this is great. We're going to appreciate, you know, single stories and whatever, but you just move a little bit further further down yep. and you see what, how it's really going to be well, taught and it's, what it's really about. It's the rationalization for being anti-individualist. It's yes. saying we can't be individualist because that doesn't give you the sociological perspective that we want you to have. And we want you to have a group level perspective. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. When I keep going. I'm just yeah, gonna... sure. Down. Next one. Guiding principles of ethnic studies. Is that that's okay. the next page, but there's another one after that. Yeah. Here. Um, oh, here's the double helix. The foundational values of ethnic studies are housed in the conceptual model of a double helix, which oh, right up here, right up here. Yes. Yeah. Which interweaves holistic humanization and critical consciousness. Okay. From a religious point, you don't have a, you don't have the business to teach that to my child. If I believe something different. You don't have a right to teach one holistic humanization, which is what they're doing in schools, bringing in yoga before classes. People can be fine with yoga, but other people aren't fine with yoga. Right. So right. bringing that into our classrooms under the name of we're all unifying. For some people, there I know people who would lose their ever loving mind over. Well, and these words are so vague: love, love for respect. what and for whom and of what respect. Yeah. For whom, of what, how, hope, hope for what exactly? When we're talking about activism, what's our goal that we're supposed to be hoping for? And what is solidarity? Because right. that sounds kind of like that's a communist keyword whole, to me. Ab absolutely. That's the whole thing that I, I'm talking about, critical about creating this sort of, you know, androgynous group um, of, 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 of people. You have the people that are the marginalized and you have the allies which are the white people that are going to be the, 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 the you know, the heterosexual white people probably are going to be the, the allies that are going to join. That's what they're trying to do. I think yes. it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's a capture of its division, but it's also a capture of trying to, to, to form narratives that bring all of that into violent group activity. I mean, talk about how cults, you know, things start. Right. Many times, right. There's some vulnerability and feelings of maybe alone or shame or isolation. And the cult says, come to us and we're going to solve your problem for you. And you therefore are going to end up finding your purpose. Wow. You know, this, this first one here, cultivate empathy, community, actualization, cultural perpetuity. And under and underneath it says Forever. an understanding that a culture's important teachings will live on. Okay. Self-worth, self-determination, and the holistic well-being of all participants, especially native peoples and black, indigenous, and people of color, BIPOC. In other words, not white people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and here you have two white you have two BIPOCs right here on this call right now. Okay. <laughs> tearing this apart. I mean, yeah. there's nothing I hate more than than being called BIPOC. Yeah, yeah. It's well, and gross. also center the the place high value of the pre-colonial ancestral knowledge. Why? Yes. Why? Because we're going backwards. This is so California had this thing where they were supposed to praise an Aztec god. Um why? Again, let's go back to those percentages for our kids. If our kids have a 16% proficiency rate, why in the world are we spending time going all the way back to pre-colonial times? Because we want to go back to a time when there was no property. And that's mm. ultimately what this mm. goes down to. Oh, wow. That's interesting. I wouldn't have made that connection. That's brilliant, Kara. But the thing is, is that when we go down to this no property and we teach our kids to believe this, we are, we're throwing our kids into communism. Mm -hmm. I would that, not have made that, that connection. That is very amazing. interesting. And that I think that, that feeds into the theory of, uh, you know, wanting to create a communist country. I mean, I'm just going to say it. I yes. think this, this is the direction. 
absolutely. This is, this is how it's going. So I, I agree with you hundred percent on that, Carol. Hmm. That's fascinating. That's Let's, fascinating. You want to so, go to the next one? Yeah, you can see their names. Christine Sleater. I highly recommend people look her up. She's got some interesting YouTube videos on um, how she explains what critical. See. I um, thought there was another one. Maybe there's not. That's the last on that one. Oh, so Okay, go ahead. Next one. Then. Let's go to the next page that you sent me. All right. And I apologize for them being all over the place. This is what we're doing as we well, take part page by page. Let's see. Is this the top one? Yeah, the top one. You want yeah. to start with this one? Yes. Okay. So let's go with encourage cultural understanding of how different groups have struggled, work together, highlighting four ethnic studies concepts. Okay. So we see words like work together and we think, oh, that sounds great. Sounds wonderful. We want to see how people work together. But the goal is to highlight core ethnic studies concepts, which is again, the double helix of teaching kids how it centers around the marginalized and how we use their revolutionary energy. So the concepts such as equity, justice, remember what justice means to the social justice crowd. Mm -hmm. This is Antifa. Justice is reparations. Justice it's, is reparations. It's retributive um, dis redistribution. It's it's also violence, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there's so much that comes into it, yeah. I, and I have to say, even with re re reparations, you know, we never had slavery in California. So how does this ma ever make any? How does this make any sense? California well, and I wonder, like, involved. also, how do you divide that for people who are of mixed race? Like, what percentage of you is the <laughs> oppressor, and what percentage is the oppressed? And does part of you owe the other part of you? Yeah, whatever they the reparations about, or. How about the black people who own slaves? Yeah. That's that's a true thing in America. The first person to buy slaves in America was a black, was a black man. man. That's is that right? Yes. I did not know right. that. That's interesting. So yeah. So um include information on and the ever more studies slaves. movement, specifically the World Liberation Front. What is that? So I'm not sure about that specific one of the World Liberation Front, but I am certain of the word liberation mm -hmm. that's when we get into uh the black panthers that's when we get into liberated ethnic studies okay and it's so, but this is like a this is like a key part of this curriculum is to talk about this organization yeah. which is what it's not like who is some... I, I mean yeah i have not went through and looked at that one yet that's, that's um, pretty specific I just saw the word liberation and thought, oh, no. That's really interesting. <laughs> um, and its significance in establishment of ethnic studies as a discipline. So I wonder what that is. That's almost something that, uh, you know, maybe merits some discipline. specific it's research. Be a, right. It's going to end up being um, a major in college, an option for a major in college. I don't uh, know if I shared the page, but there's a page that talks about how your admins need to be chosen. Is this, um, I don't know, you sent me a few. So is, yeah. this is another page here. Um, the ethnic studies model curriculum. It talks about how the teachers need to be committed and how they need to have ongoing. Um, is it this one? Yeah, the teachers? That, that looks oh, right. Why is that creeping down? So. Okay, stop creeping. I don't think so. Um, okay, let's see. Um, let me go back. And that's not happening. This, can I just give you guys an example? We have... Yeah. Um, the be inclusive, we had a teacher, so our schools have taken the stance that they're not going to talk about LGBTQ. They're just gonna treat kids with respect. Well, we had a teacher who decided that she was going to show an LGBTQ film to her middle school classroom. And the seconds that the kids, like she timed it so that right before class was done, the big makeout session between two men would happen and the kids these are eighth grade boys were they weren't they they didn't like it they were making you know sounds like eighth grade boys would gross whatever and she stopped and she reprimanded all of them and she said oh we're not going to say what we think because we don't do that in our school so these teachers are following the letter of the law right to that line and then they're changing things. So another teacher brought out a bunch of pencils and then brought a rainbow pencil and said, I support LGBTQ. Yes, I do. 
just mm-hmm. like randomly to put this stuff into the kids faces mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. because they've been trained that their most important role is to be an activist so that means that you are you are subversive when needed because the mission that you're on requires that you continue to plug this stuff and be an activist yeah and i i attended one of the trainings for teachers i'll say for out out here in one of our districts they brought in a black woman who had an two phds from harvard very very successful you know um uh, academic woman. And the very first thing she says is all of you white people in here are need to go home and take a look in the mirror. That's the first thing you need to do and realize what your role is in creating systemic racism. Literally, uh, it's not the exact words, but literally that is what she did as her opening. So I listened for an hour and a half as she trained the teachers on white privilege and white fragility and critical race theory and why critical social justice needs to be brought into the classroom. And the response from the teachers was, uh, I mean, out of, out of this world. I mean, people were clapping and clapping and excited and, and standing up and standing ovations, I, which blew my mind because right then and there, you're just, be, you're being told you're a problem and you're, you're standing up and cheering. So there are teachers that are against this or, 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 or don't want to go along with it, but there's a lot that are being trained by people like this woman and they are changing their belief systems themselves and becoming activists for the, you know, as, as role models for the kids and then teaching them to be activists as well, but that those teachers are, and uh, that's how they train. They, they have the teachers do the similar activities that they have the kids do. You know, so right, right, how you're privileged, all the ways you're privileged, except I think the biggest concern is that they, when they change their ideology, they get giddy about it. They're (laughs) literally, I've heard people say, I want ethnic studies as entwined as cinnamon is as cinnamon bread. And they're, they get so giddy. Okay. So let's just take what your average person feels like, because I'm guessing that half those teachers that are standing up clapping are clapping just like they are when, um, I think it was Stalin, it might've been Hitler, when all the people clapped until, you know, the first person to clap was condemned. So I think that that oftentimes happens. So you've got people who are probably manic Mm -hmm. and they're giddy in their manicness. Mm -hmm. And then they're taking these terrible ideas that are hard for adults Mm -hmm. I think you covered a a principal who killed himself yes I think there was a right Mm -hmm. so these horrible ideas that are terrible for adults and then you have a giddy teacher who just can't wait to go into the classroom and expose and and do that to kids and I don't have there's I don't have another term than sadomasochism yeah, and this is like called this is cult like, and I'm not an expert in cults, but you know, I wrote a little bit about it with a you know with a, a colleague. This mm-hmm. is cult cultness, cult cult likeness, right? Mm-hmm. It's like come and join, and yes. your problems will be all solved. And you know, mm-hmm. if anybody is dissenting from the well, narrative, there's, there's what it's doing. Out. Yeah, like what you're saying, Christine. There's what it's doing, and it's cult like, and it's drawing people in. It's also, it's, it's like two things at once, because on the one hand here, you're supplying this way of thinking and incentives for doing this. But then on the other hand, you're also dumbing people down by failing to teach the basics. Because like when I was in, in, at Antioch and I'm, and I, I was talking about, um, I've talked about this in a lot of videos, they were spending so much of their focus on this DEI kind of stuff that I don't feel like I got as much as adequate a, a, an education as I, I would have liked to have gotten on some basic psychological concepts and some some things that would have helped me as a counselor. They're, they've shifted the focus. And so when you think about this proficiency rate of 16 some percent for this population of kids, and and we, we've all seen the statistics on how taking kids out of school for a couple of years for COVID and putting them on screens instead really hurt the, um, the academic mastery of grade level um, you know, I guess hitting, hitting their usual benchmarks. So you've got kids that are behind already. And instead of teaching them, you are supplying them with this DEI garbage instead. 
Well, it, can, it, it looks like you guys froze up. Control. I don't know if everybody's frozen or if it's just I think me. it's just you. But. Oh, there you are. Oh, now we can't hear you. You're completely muted. Yeah, we had a little bit of a screen issue. Oh, there we go. Okay. Back on. But yeah, you so you're you're not vulnerable. teaching adequate. Yeah, so you have vulnerable people that are not well educated on many things that are identity formation based on what they're told, you know, that, that their identity is. It's easier to control people that way. I mean, it just that's that's those are the they're ripe for the picking. And so mm -hmm. they're dumbing people down, they're dumbing down these kids so that they don't, you know think for themselves and they swallow this it's a means of control so let's and, dumb them down i mean it's and it's, it's actually horrifying i mean it's abusive you know in my opinion uh, the, 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 this, this qualifies as child abuse in my opinion uh what they're doing it, it it's manipulation uh it's it, to the to the highest level you can't get worse than this well and it's also all day every day because it's as the woman said, it's as ingrained as cinnamon is in cinnamon bread. Mm -hmm. So it's not just, here's your ethnic studies class. It's that ethnic studies is in everything. Mm -hmm. And ethnic studies is climate hysteria. Ethnic studies, and I'm not saying climate change. I, I'm not giving an opinion one way or another. I'm saying that the hysteria, yes. the telling young kids that they're going to die in six years. <laughs> what the hell? Mm -hmm. I, I'm not a big swearer, but what the hell? Okay, so we have that, and then we have transgenderism, as if transgenderism has been around and is a, has been a regular thing for longer than the last couple of years. So we're teaching our kids Grooming. this and saying that this is their, this is this is part of your culture. No, it's really not. Just be Grooming. honest. Yeah, it's Grooming. not. Grooming. And they have a full agenda, but it never stops. So these kids, for those eight hours that they're in school. In one way or another, it comes into their class. We used to think that it only came in through English, and we thought that maybe it came in through history, but we're seeing it in science. We're seeing it in math. There are kids who are coming home going, why have I not done a single math problem? I've been in school for a month, and math is only about social justice. Didn't That's I send so you all an article yesterday about in California about how they wanted to take out the word math and call it something else that was more inclusive? Oh, I must have missed that. What? Might have, I, I don't. What? I, maybe I didn't. I might have not sent it, but that is happening in California. That's been what? Passed. Why is the word math not inclusive? What's it's not inclusive because um, I don't. I you know what? I actually don't even. I, I, I don't even crazy. know what the argument is, but it's not inclusive because you know there's people that. Um, we're not exposed to, uh, I don't math and, and, and people that have immigrated here from third world countries. And oh my so, gosh, but we're talking about kids, like we're supposed it, to educate yeah, them, expose to, them to it, expose yeah. them to math. And then that's, that's, so they're calling it something else now. I forgot wow. what the call, what it was, but, and it's one, I, and, I, and I don't know if this is Cal, but the a state, state assembly, I believe passed it, which means it's going to trickle down for sure to every district. There's some level of flexibility with the district um, folks to to kind of do their own thing, but the big these these are initiatives that are directives that are on a federal level. They're not just California that they're required to to impart. It's like it's like I said before, you know the the administration, whoever the hell that is, heck that is, um, <laughs> pulled resources and funding or threatened to pull resources and funding from Arizona schools k through 12 for lunch if they did not teach a critical race theory course we won't right? feed you if you don't teach. we're not going to feed the you same with the bathroom. it's being federalized it's not just and you know obviously as a republic you know our our country was meant to have for states to have more power uh their own citizens over a federalized government and of course that's changed now drastically so all of this is being federalized, which means mm -hmm. it's coming to a neighborhood near you at some point. I think some governors have rejected it, but there's a lot of, you know, um, incentivization, such as cutting off funding for certain programs that people depend on for, you know, the federal government to pay, which is highly problematic. So what are you going to do? You're going to leave the kids starving or you, you know, or you, or are you just going to say, let's do this critical race theory class. So at least the kids eat. I think Child that there's abuse. a lot of parents who would donate. 
I think that there's solutions at the grassroots level. But you so know, that article, it is. And you know what? That's why that article was buried. That's exactly why that article was buried because all that needed to happen in that moment is for those parents to mobilize and to start providing the lunches or mobile, get money, whatever it is, go gift, go send or whatever that website is yep. that right there would have solved the problem actually. And, and so why was that article buried? Because they don't want you to, they don't want you to know, okay. They, they don't, they want to keep you in the dark. They want to keep you un, you know, educated about this completely ignorant. Um, they have no, I, they, they have no intention but that is uh, from a very reliable conservative news source that shared that information as to what, you know, the reason that the schools were adopting CRT. Can you imagine? I, I think that this is, I mean, I know I, I, I've said this before, but the schools are irredeemable at this point. We need to pull our kids out and force them to reckon with what they've done. And I, I really, I know that sounds like a hard line and it sounds really black and white, but I, I believe that what we've, what has happened has infested the education system from, from K through 12 to higher education so badly that what we need is a general boycott of schools yep. and we need to take them back over, make them do it differently because these, these, and isn't that funny? Isn't there some irony in saying that? Because I'm saying that there's a systemic problem and I'm, I, I could almost go, I could, I could almost find myself falling neatly into a counter narrative, which yes. frustrates me because it's, it sort of makes my mind loop a little bit, but I wouldn't put my children in these programs and I wouldn't pay to be in one of these programs myself. And I, um, I, I don't see how we're going to recover by continuing it's like, it's like you think, well, I'm just going to keep putting my kids in because I have to work or because I, they, they do need to be educated and I'm not equipped to do it. It's like, you're building the walls of your own prison brick by brick. You know, people have to start mobilizing in their own community. They have to start mobilizing so that they can deal with the school boards or they can deal with this, with this, with the, with the soup, uh, the county supervisors, things like that. I, I think you mentioned grassroots care earlier and I might've cut you off, which I apologize, but that's the only way that this would change. However, with the schools, if you mobilize, you can probably do a sharing of teaching, co-teaching, whatever, so that not, so the burden doesn't even fall on one parent alone. Even that would create a network, right? Of people that you're able to have as teachers that you can depend on that are, you know, teaching your kids properly. And you might teach one class and then somebody else teach it, whatever it is. Right. You build your own mini school. Yes. And, and we do do that. One thing that um, we're, we're past the phase of going to our school boards. So yeah, so that's, that is true. We just, we just are, we're at the point, we just had a bill passed that was uh, um, students right of conscious and it passed with our legislature. And um, that meant that if a child was being taught something that they fundamentally did not agree with, they could leave using this. Well, our school board just had a meeting and it literally passed this summer and they had a meeting. Their first meeting is to remove its teeth. So you can't, the child cannot use that if it's over a core subject. Well, we know that our core subjects are being infiltrated. So our kids are being used as pawns. Yep. And that's really what it comes down to. And, and unfortunately, you might find one or two people on your school board who are like-minded, but, um, you know, they're, they're very much drawn by the funding and they're also drawn by um they're drawn by emotions and they're easily manipulated and also whether they have the time or whether they don't have the time or whatever they aren't looking into the information which is why mm -hmm. many of us parents are trying to do the work ourselves we're trying to say yeah. look go to my youtube channel and look at all of this stuff because i'm going line by line pointing out the issues so that you are better equipped. What can we mm -hmm. do to help you? But at the same time, we can't sacrifice our kids. Yeah. You know, which is what we're it's, doing. 
Yes. And you know what? It's happening with the transgenderism as well, because something just passed or is on the table to pass in California, um, taking away parent rights in a sense, in the sense that if you don't support the transgenderism with your child, you can have your kid taken from you. We've already seen that child protective services go to homes of families who don't address their children by their preferred pronouns or preferred names or preferred whatever. And, um, you know, have threat have, have made these threats. Now an actual bill will pass that makes it illegal, okay, to deny your child's pronoun and their their their, their whatever name. Um, how do you get back from that? This is where it comes back down to teaching in a small pod, a little pod that you create of like-minded people to get your kids away from this nonsense. Mm -hmm. And to stay away from the governmental side of it that's controlling because the school boards, that's government, right? And they are captured and it's over. And you're right about that. That's not going to really do much. So the only way you do it, you pull your kids from the school. Guess what happens? The school loses funding. So the school isn't able to pay their own teachers. So they have to, they have to make some choices there. That's when you're actually forcing their hand, but you Mm -hmm. need a big movement to do that. You're right. And I think- Carib, when you're talking about why people do this, people are doing this like they're being incentivized with money. Yes. They're also being uh, swayed by emotion. So yes. But then there's a huge number of people who are just, they just have their head in the sand about how serious this is. And they, they would rather go along to get along than make waves because they just think that this is, this is a trend. It's not that bad. It's going to go away. Everything will be fine. And those people just need to stop contributing. Just just take a look at it. It really is serious. What's happening really is serious. And we need to find ways to stop contributing to this problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on today to talk about this. And Carob's channel is Be Not Afraid. I'll put a link to it down in the description under this video. And what are any final thoughts, ladies? What, what do you want to leave people um, with today? I th- check out the CTA podcast, also critical therapy antidote. It's um, the, the channel name is just CTA uh, podcast. I think, yeah, uh, I think that's if, right. if not, you can I'll go put a link to, down under there yeah, as well. Yeah. Critical therapy antidote.org. And you'll link up. We have some really amazing um, episodes uh, and inter- interviews that we're still doing um, about all of these issues and this the, with the mental health psychological lens. So look at what's happening to people on um, that level. So, mm-hmm. um, and that's hosted by Christine out. with Yako Funsale. Yes. Fantastic, fantastic work they're doing. Both Thank Carib you. and I are, are featured in there. We've both talked with them yes, for that podcast have. and yeah. yeah, it's really, really good stuff. It's a, an important subject to address. Yes. Yeah. I think the last thing that I want to hit on is that this taking of our kids in California need to remember that, that uh, some of these people have said you will own nothing. And when mm-hmm. they say own nothing, they include, that includes our children. Mm-hmm. Our children are considered property in this mess. And I think that that's really important for people to understand that, that they want our kids to be allegiant to the state and they don't want family relationships. So yeah. Yeah. We're coming yeah. for your kids. Very don't stuff. you remember? Sorry to be so heavy, guys. <laughs> no, it is heavy. Thank you so much. I think it's really important to address these things. So yeah, I appreciate and you letting me. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for coming on and let's do it again soon. That sounds good. Sounds All right. All right.